Youths help with food and mass distribution in South Africa. Tsuji volunteers bring new hope in Sabah, Malaysia. Welcome to Da'ai Headlines. I'm Elise Ann DeVito. Thank you for joining us. 115 young people were invited to pack food and masks together with Tsuji volunteers. The representative from Taipei Liaison Office in the Republic of South Africa arrived to help out. Salt, sugar, sorghum flour and beans, Tsujings from South Africa, along with volunteers, join one another to pack supplies every week. Many local teens have applied for the New Shoot Scholarship Award. I hope these children will learn diligently and comfortably in the future while volunteering with us. Another person that joined the volunteering ranks is Anthony C. Y. Ho, a representative from Taipei Liaison Office in the Republic of South Africa. He brought his wife and colleagues into understanding how Tsuji does charity work and hopes of further collaboration. I've heard of your great efforts during the pandemic. In the future, there will be plenty of opportunities for us government officials to collaborate with the Tsuji Foundation. Let us learn from one another so that we may help our South African friends. A total of 1,160 packages and 11.7 thousand masks were packed and local volunteers were given the Taiwan Can Help COVID prevention bag. It is hoped that these seeds of kindness may start to root in South Africa. Tsuji's Lotus Sutra performance will take place in early May. To protect the environment, Tsuji volunteers are recycling the old stage in Shuanghe Jingsu Hall to build in Hualien. Let's take a look. <laughs> Volunteers are carefully measuring the stage height. Among the city volunteers from northern Taiwan, 13 of them are professional carpenters. We faced some difficulties in assembling the parts. With the marks we made, the stage we made in Zhonghe became different once they were brought to Hualien. To ensure that on-stage volunteers can stay in their formations when performing, volunteers may position maps as well as place markers to confirm the positions. Back in Shuanghe, we pasted the markers more than 10 times. In a short period of time, we mobilized the volunteers and made changes time after time. The backdrop of the stage is made by recyclable materials so that the volunteers can lessen the damage to the environment. Basically, we utilize recyclable materials to design our stage. The cave's design utilizes cloth and copper pieces. After the performance is over, we can return the materials to pieces of copper. This way, we can use them repeatedly. Ten minutes of performance takes ten years of practice off stage. The stage building team are doing their best to ensure the sutra adaptation can run smoothly to spread Dhamma teachings. In the, in the United States, Los Angeles Animal Save launched a vigil for animals. The public are invited to bear witness to chickens, pigs, and cows about to be slaughtered. Many became vegans. Let's learn more. Is this your first time at a vigil? Well, first of all, thank you for coming. This is a slaughterhouse. We come to these places to bear witness to these animals. Bearing witness is a very powerful tool to get people to see the truth and to get them to be active for the animals. These are their final moments uh, before they're gonna be violently killed. My name is Amy Jean Davis. I am the founder of LA Animal Save. LA Animal Save is part of Animal Save Movement, which is a global organization. We have around a thousand chapters in different branches. I was one of those personal choice vegans who didn't really understand that animals are individuals and deserve certain rights. 
Toronto Pig Save, the very first save group of Animal Save Movement, reached out to me on social media and asked me to come to a vigil. I had been a top 24 finalist on American Idol, so they thought that if I come to the vigil, maybe they could get some media coverage. And from that moment, things in my life were different. Right now, we're here at our chicken vigil, which we hold every other Thursday. It's a very early morning vigil, so um, it's not easy for a lot of people to come to. We also hold cow vigils every other Friday morning, and then we also hold pig vigils. We stop the trucks for a couple of minutes and we give those pigs water. All animals are denied food and water in transport, and so they're, they're very thirsty. So that's what we do at the vigils. We're there to, to see the animals and share who they are, who they were with the public. We can document them, we can tell them we're sorry, and plead with people on social media to stop funding this. So here is uh, one truck full of thousands of birds. And we actually have four trucks here at the moment. You can see them all lined up. We're just here on the street. For those that are in the LA area, I do encourage you to come and see these animals. Um, so this chicken just passed away sometime between the truck arriving and, and now. He was barely breathing when, when we got here. It's a pretty profound experience coming to a vigil for vegans or non-vegans. When you watch a truck full of intelligent, imaginative creatures with inner lives as deep and connected as ours, going into a slaughterhouse, you realize that was their one chance. And because people want to eat meat, we rob that of them and there is nothing more valuable and our one chance to experience as much joy and connection and compassion in our lives as possible. I became a vegan after attending a vigil. This is like their funeral, and we're showing up for them. And these are animals who haven't experienced compassion in their entire life, and their life is about to end. And this is a moment that we can show them not all humans are like the humans you know. I've been vegan for over five years, and I thought being vegan is not enough. I need to be an animal rights activist as well. This is my second time attending a chicken vigil. It took me a while to finally attend one. I was terrified um, of what the experience might be like. It tears me up. It makes me really upset with the choices that we make to eat these animals, but it also inspires me to continue to educate, have conversations, and act out of love and not anger. It's important that these people know that we're not coming here to shame them or insult them, but there are other industries that not only can you buy foods from them that are gonna keep you healthy and thriving, but also those industries will need more and more people in their workforce. We want them to know that those opportunities exist and they're only gonna grow in number as more and more people switch to a plant-based diet. As vegans, we're not harming the planet anymore. As activists, we're helping it. Do you wanna know why you're vegan? Do you wanna know what you stand for? Then you should come to a vigil. from these chicken vigils and a lot of other animals saved from different situations, other slaughterhouses. They get to live in peace and, and, and being loved. As an activist, I think most activists need that. They need to be able to see some of the animals get saved because we see so many of them off to their deaths.
Pangja Islet, Manhua Islet, and Huaping Islet are important fishing grounds in Taiwan. Abundant birds are also found there. However, these islets might become a wind power development site. Let's learn more. This is not an easy journey, because to travel to the Street Lofton Islet, one must set off before dawn and sail north as the sun rises from the east. After two and a half hours of sailing, we finally arrive in Manhua Islet ahead. It is actually not that easy to come to Manhua Islet, because you have to go through an application and follow an ecological research group so as to land on the island. This time we'll focus on plants, insects and rodents removal on the island. When we sail at the sea, we mainly do some observation on seabirds and cetaceans, and our cooperative team will collect underwater acoustic data. As early as 1996, the Fishery Agency, the Council of Agriculture, declared Manhua Islet and Huapin Islet of the Street Lofton Islet as the wildlife preservation areas. Since Huapin Islet is too small to land, so ecological observations are mainly focused on Manhua Islet. Some people say that it's called Manhua Islet because there are a lot of seabirds on the island and they look like cotton when breeding. However, the legend that this islet looks like cotton was broken in 1988 because some people released six ghosts from Keelong to Manhua Islet. By 1994, 44 ghosts had been bred. In this photo taken in 1996, it can be seen that Manhua Islet was bare. All plants have been eaten up, and no seabirds can be seen. The ghosts were finally brought back to the main island of Taiwan, and Manhua Islet then began a long ecological restoration. When we went up to the island last year in 2020, we found bridal terns came back to breed again. That means that the effects of establishing wildlife preservation area in 1996 have gradually showed up, let alone we made the first breeding record of streak shearwater, which was not seen in time before. In this observation record has greatly encouraged the Kinon White Bird Society, which has been investigating birds on Manhua Islet for 12 years. This represents the marine ecology of the Street Lofton Islet become healthy again. The landing process is quite thrilling, because the boat must get temporarily stuck on the reef by the waves so people can land on the island. In 2021, Sita Explorers Co. Limited took over the ecological investigation project. A brand new research team landed on the island for the first time to start the record task. Now we see two researchers lying on the edge of the cliff. I wonder what they are doing. Let's ask our bird experts. What are these two researchers doing? Okay, now I'm asking them to help me look at the nest of the strict shear water because its nest is just on the edge of the cliff. As its nest is a bit deep, so we made a self-made nest detector to see if it is inside or any signs of activity. And the large tracts of suraban plants are spread on the volcano island like cotton. Researchers believe that there may be natural enemies of seabirds. Mice may often follow the fishing boat or someone just put it here. This may be harmful to the birds, like the streak shear water we are studying, because rats will go into their nest to eat their eggs or bite the young birds or even attack the adults. Goats, mice and seabirds compete for natural selection. But humans finally chose to retain seabirds as they are the native species in the street Lofton Islet which are the main midway stations for migratory birds in Japan, Ryukyu and China. According to the survey of the Keelong White Bird Society, there are a total of 55 families and 243 species of birds inhibits here. There are 160 species of birds in Mianhua Island alone, in which 22 are conserved species. If we have a thousand terms breeding on it, then how many marine resources are needed to support this ecosystem? It seems that we have enough marine resources in the entire three northern islets to support this, because we have the record of having many seabirds breeding on it before. However, the ecosystem that took more than 20 years to restore may be affected by the three Lofton Islet being listed as a development site of the offshore wind farm.
there are several possible impacts on birds. They may collide with wind turbines, or they may avoid that. But then they may not come to the area of wind farm to search for food. So in fact, there should be more or less impacts on birds. From the viewpoint of wildlife research, if it is not found, doesn't mean it does not exist. Basically, this is the root of bird migration. We should consider bird safety in their lives. The environment of Menhua Island is so natural and primitive, but this beautiful place is very likely to be affected by the wind turbines plugged into its southern sea area. How to balance nature and energy sustainability? This issue needs all of us to care continuously. The pandemic is severe again in Sabah, Malaysia, and Sadakan City volunteers have resumed making home visits. City volunteers built a new house for Toto's seven-member family. Let's learn more. The overwater bungalow's wooden pillars have become rotten. This is the house of a family of seven at Sandakan in Sabah. If it rains, the rainwater will leak into the house. When there is high tide at night, the seawater also flows into the house and the water is three meters deep. At 10 o'clock at night, when there is high tide, I will wake up my children and ask them to place the chairs on the table to avoid getting wet. City volunteers decided to renovate a house for Toto. Moving the construction materials is a big challenge. We almost fell into the gutter. Since the boat was full of wooden planks, the boat was heavy and unsteady. I was not used to it. Fortunately, but then the boatman held my hand, so I was fine. During movement restriction order period, there's limited manpower. With the volunteers' encouragement, Toto's friends and neighbors have come to help out. I saw that they were leading a harsh life. We did our best to help them renovate the house. If they needed monetary aid, we cannot help, as we are also having a hard time. Toto fishes for a living, and his wife Sylvia does laundry for people. The couple earns only 120 ringgits a month, which runs up to nearly 30 U.S. dollars. Due to the pandemic, they have lost their incomes, and the family has sought help from Ziji. After assessing their conditions, volunteers deliver daily supplies, hoping they help them get through the tough times. I am very surprised. I did not expect that so the volunteers would help build a new house for us. I appreciate Ziji for helping me. My old house was about to collapse. Now they've renovated it. I feel at ease. Staying at the new house, Toto's family can sleep with peace of mind. City volunteers have brought smiles to their faces. Previously, Dai News reported on a single parent in Taichung who made dumplings to sell as a living. Due to overwork, though, she had a stroke. The family is the Suji Care recipient family. Let's learn more. Suffered a stroke due to brain hemorrhage, Ms. Dai continues her physical therapy twice a day as she has children to take care of. I go each day to work on my balance and find motor skills. Ms. Dai is a single parent and has three daughters to raise. She made dumplings to sell to make ends meet for her family. She has gained some use of her hand now. Before, she could not use her left hand to make a fist. Her youngest daughter was diagnosed with hemangioma, and she had been working to pay for the medical fees, but then had a stroke. We see you as a daughter of our own. We just wish you the best in your rehabilitation so you can regain your strength. So you volunteers care and send their best wishes to her. The master has said, if we worry about our kids, it will add to their karmic debt. So we must change our mindset. Accompanying Miss Dai through her low points in life, Ziji is there to help her face whatever challenges may come. Norman from Indonesia was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic cancer at the end of 220. Norman's brother is a doctor and works at Indonesia Ziji Hospital. Norman was sent to Taiwan for medical treatment. In this life-changing journey, I have met some of the nicest people who have treated me as their own family. 
Norman, who came from Indonesia, was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic cancer in 2020 and needed stem cell transplantation. He happened to be matched with his brother who accompanied him to Taiwan. The medical team at Huanian Suzi Medical Center treated him with chemotherapy, oral targeted drugs and allogenic stem cell transplantation with relatives. For such a young man, he has a stronger ability to withstand transplantation. Though he still suffered a lot, he needed to undergo very strong chemotherapy as his white blood cells almost reduced to zero. His mucous membrane was temporarily damaged as well, so it is inconvenient and there is no way for him to eat. He was quite weak in every aspect. Although Norman was weak during chemotherapy, the medical team taught him simple exercise to reduce the cancer caused fatigue, so that he can restore his health gradually. Slowly I gain more strength. I feel healthier, but not back to normal yet. But I can do daily activities. I can get back to work again. I hope one day I can come back to Wallen again for vacation, <laughs> not, not for treatment. <laughs> Norman's elder brother is in Indonesia. He cared about his brother's health by video conferencing and at the same time learned the technique of bone marrow transplantation. And for Norman, before returning to Indonesia, he went to Jin Su Abol to express his gratitude and the master also gave out her blessings. The chance for Norman to get reborn is only one in 100,000. So this medical team will continue this loving care across the sea. In Malaysia, Kalan Zuji volunteer Chan Chung Mi and community volunteers prepared vegetarian gift sets for Chan's granddaughter's one-month celebration. Steaming sticky rice and preparing vegetarian curry, city volunteers are preparing four-month gifts at the recycling station's kitchen in the morning. They're helping volunteer Chen Chu Mi celebrate as her granddaughter turns one month old. Her first granddaughter is turning one month old. They were going to give out meat dishes. Sister Chu Mi is very wise and insisted on giving out vegetarian food. When the team heard about it, everyone was willing to support her. In the beginning, her family had some concerns about giving out vegetarian food gifts, but Chen Chu Mei persuaded her family to support her. When my granddaughter turned one month old, I checked out the stores to see food month gifts in Klein, but they all contained meat. After all, we are Tsuzi volunteers and the master promotes vegetarianism. This time, we are preparing vegetarian gifts because the little Buddha server at my family wants to form good affinities with everyone. When delivering the vegetarian food gifts, Chu Mei also explains her intention, hoping her family and friends can receive their best wishes. It is very special. I'm very happy to try it. It is environmentally friendly and healthy. With the support of community volunteers, Chen Chu Mei and her family are seizing the occasion to encourage more people to embrace vegetarianism. Volunteers from Siji and Ciudad del Este, Paraguay, continue to care about epidemic prevention supplies for the regional hospital. 1,000 sets of protective equipment will be used in three days. Therefore, local volunteers are at the ready to replenish supplies. See you next time.